Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service today. Thank you for keeping an eye on the calendar and the clock and uh, returning to our space. Bit of a different space today because of our renovation work. Uh, we're told that the sanctuary will be ready next week, so uh, we look forward to that. There are some advantages of being down here. It is a new bright space with new lights. And uh, with chairs, we're guaranteed that whoever comes, the church will be full. <laughs> well, I guess we have pews over here this morning. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we take a moment to look at our announcements found in your bulletin. Announcements that are there and uh, some others. We are back to 11 o'clock. Please remind folks. It looks like everybody uh, knew that. But if you run into someone who doesn't, please remind them that we are back to 11 o'clock and we are back to our office hours as well. A note that uh, during the month of September, uh, Lorna will be in the office Tuesdays, Wednesdays, <coughs> and Thursdays from 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. I asked her now and then how many people come in at 7.30. <laughs> and she says, not very many. It's a great time to do uh, work. I know people do start to come in at 9 or 10. But she will be there those hours. And I will most of the time be there from uh, Wednesday from 9 to noon. This week, though, I do have another meeting, so I'll be there on Thursday this week. So if you need to come in and see me or want to drop by, please do that on Thursday this week. And of course, any other time uh, we can arrange to be together uh, at the office or at your home as you may need. I'll leave the other announcements with you. A reminder for folks who uh, usually attend the service that there is the, uh, the Legion service this evening at 6 o'clock at uh, Lakeside Cemetery, or the, I forget the official title of that, it's Decoration Sunday. Decoration Sunday, and that's where we, uh, we commemorate, I think we have the little lamp, little lights that we take to the, to the grave site, so we appreciate that service each year, and we're grateful that the little bit of weather that uh, was coming through has come through and shouldn't affect that service this evening. Also, Steve, if anybody's yes, looking for candles for that candlelight service, yep. I have them with me, so if anybody wants to see me at the church, I have good. them in the car. Very good. They'll be probably available at the... They will be, the be available out there tonight, yeah. Very good. We appreciate that as well. <clears throat> the uh, renovation work has a number of aspects, and one that I'm sure you immediately noticed as you came to church today was that you could actually find a parking spot that was marked as a parking spot. You didn't have to guess how far away from the next car it would be. So thank you to uh, Tom and Harry for painting the lines in the parking lot. I think uh, I think the challenge might be to figure out how many handicapped spots we needed. And I think that that was the ideal number, a few right by the front door and some by the back door. So uh, thank you to uh, those gentlemen for doing that as well. Certainly, although we hire contractors for the specific work, uh, a lot of the work is done by uh, our members and parents as volunteers. And we never take that for granted, and we appreciate you doing that. We take a moment now to light our candles, right? And we pray together. We light this candle.
See integrity and understanding. The testimonies of God are wonderful. The unfolding of God's word gives light. Who made heaven and earth? Receive God's word and treasure God's commandments. Cry out for insight and knowledge. Every good endowment and perfect gift is brought forth by the will of God. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, as doers of the word, not hearers only. We seek to be redeemed from human oppression to a faith that is pure and undefiled. Let us worship God together. Please be seated. And please continue with me in our prayer approach. Open our eyes so we may clearly see the wonders of your creation. Release our tongues to share the knowledge you impart. Transform our religion so its major focus is no longer our own benefit, but on ministry to others and to be a blessed life.
streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. The uh, Hebrew scripture readings continue with our responsive song today. Please turn with me to page 836 in Voices United, where you will find Psalm 116 and our song response. <laughs> Those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, 
because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. The word of the Lord. set out and went away into the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him 
and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. But he said to her, For saying that, you may go, and the demon has left your daughter. And when she went home, she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Apathapha, that is, be open. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them not to tell, one, to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. May God add a blessing to this and to every reading from God's holy word. Amen. Let's continue as we bow together again in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, in these words, may we hear your word of everlasting life through Christ our Lord, Savior, and friend. Amen. So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Greetings again, and welcome back to our regular church services after a particularly glorious summer season. The disappointment that comes when summer ends is, in Cape Breton at least, lessened by the anticipation of a wonderful autumn, regarded by many as the best season here. Not too hot, not too cold, fantastic autumn colors, the bounty of harvest, a week of amazing concerts and celebrations. We will settle into a comfortable routine, but we'll have lots of fun doing it, and so be ready for the inevitable winter on the horizon. Along with me, you may be watching that little map from the National Hurricane Center in the States that has the Atlantic Ocean there and, and the low pressure systems and hurricanes are identified with, with little X's. The little X's have colors to tell you what's the, uh, the chance of them getting into uh, something bigger and more dangerous. So we've uh, knocked on the very heavy wood pole here. We <laughs> knock on the hurricanes stay away. Our church here continues where we left off with the common lectionary, yet you may have already noticed a bit of a change in the service order. Your worship committee will in fact be taking a closer look at our Sunday morning routine to incorporate some new practices with the goal of making worship time more interesting and meaningful. Today we began with welcome and announcements and then the intro as a more natural way of getting things going. We're also taking time later in the service to highlight the season of creation celebrated by many Christians at this time of year. Our hope is to fully embrace this season next fall, but for this year just a taste in the form of prayer and some thoughts to raise the potential of uh, this particular emphasis. Back to the lectionary now where we again encounter the Gospel of Mark Jesus in the midst of his mission to the towns and villages of ancient Palestine and beyond. We find him again speaking with and ministering to crowds and individuals as they discover who he is and who they might be by paying attention to his teachings. We witness this dynamic of discovery knowing that the presence of the Holy Spirit and existence of Jesus' disciples, that's us, 
means people are still reacting to the presence of God and the actions of people who declare their allegiance to God and to God's ways. We also come to this reading knowing that God's presence and power was with humanity long before Christ's ministry began, as witnessed by the prophet Isaiah and others in ancient Israel. In today's reading, we have one of the many visions describing the presence of God with humanity and the consequences of people recognizing God's presence and God's desires. Here, in a few powerful images, is the essence of the Jewish faith and our faith. Lean on the goodness of God, and God's commandments and life will be full and abundant. Water in the desert, sight for the blind, sound for the deaf. These are passages of hope, and in Christ that hope becomes a reality that requires not only simple belief or faith, but participation. It is always crucial to look on Jesus' miracles as much more than an act of magic by a wandering holy man. There were plenty of such characters in Jesus' time who went about uh, doing tricks and claiming to have power. They're all on television now, <laughs> doing the same thing. Send in your money, get a miracle. The healing of the passages today required the full-on participation of people concerned with the plight of the afflicted. The woman whose daughter was afflicted with a demon, with mental illness as we recognize it today, came to Jesus, and as a non-Jewish person, she first received the reaction that a Jewish teacher would give. Well, what I have is, is for the Jewish people. You're not Jewish, so what do you expect? But the woman understood that what she expected was a reaction to her faith and to her love for her daughter. And of course, Jesus recognized it as well and told her such. It's your faith that you brought to me and your faith will accomplish what you need. And she went home and her daughter was well. Likewise, a man who was deaf was able to get to Jesus because friends brought him and begged Jesus to do something for him. The foundation of the healing was their love for the man and their belief that healing was possible. And so it took place. Without works, without mother's love, without a community's affection, there would have been no miracle here. So as our year begins, we are challenged to bring to as many situations as possible not only belief, but something more. Our understanding and willingness to say that something should be done and that something can be done and our willingness to do those things that matter. We're down in our basement today, oh sorry, our hall, <laughs> because upstairs and outside work is being done to our physical plant. And thank you for our work to put the little sermons on the wall and instruction for the goodness of God and us. <laughs> we're doing it, of course, to make things more comfortable. We were pretty comfortable before. But to make this building last longer, be here longer as a place of worship, but also eventually a place of shelter, as climate change means more storms will threaten folks in our region. As with the building, so with our programs. As it happens, we have over the past number of years chosen projects that address a basic human need, following Jesus' admonition to feed the hungry. Our food bank donations, our participation in a weekly meal program with our Anglican partners are real instances of faith in action. Likewise, as our mission and service stories tell us, our gifts are works that accomplish a variety of things at home and around the world. We can take satisfaction in these efforts, but we can never assume that these are all that we can do. Each year is a chance to put faith into action, and it is our prayer that this year, God will bless all of our efforts to do so. Let us pray.
loving and generous God, we are thankful that we live a life of faith, but that you have given us an opportunity to match that faith with good intentions and solid works. Bless this congregation that you have created for that purpose and to that end, in the service of Christ, our Lord and Savior.
this year. <coughs> Thankfully, we're reminded by the year that that's available. So uh, I want to acknowledge that that is available and that uh, next year, uh, in the spring and into the summer, uh, we will together be looking at the uh, full uh, complement of those resources and incorporating them into worship. But this year, we do want to acknowledge that there is a season of creation, certainly based on uh, the very first words of the Bible. In the beginning, God created. God continues to create, and uh, we see that about us today as God works through the people of our church to recreate and create this space and the potential for uh, greater works in this community. And of course, a major emphasis and a major reason for the season of creation is the real threat of climate change detrimental to uh, human life. We know it's real. We joke about storms coming, but we know that uh, storms uh, are real and are more prevalent because of the many changes in our planet. So we care for creation and we will continue to uh, speak of creation over the next number of weeks. Now turn to a prayer with that emphasis and our pastoral time. So let us pray again. For our creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, groaning as it suffers together the pains of labor. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes what one has already seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ who makes all things new. Hear our prayer, Lord, spoken in this time of creation, but also as our church year begins. Bless our new efforts, inspire our intentions to do better, to put our faith into action as a community, as in individuals. We thank you for the resources at our disposal for this building that we renovate, for this community which we ask that you would renew, for the potential that is before us, for the ability to be agents of your creation. We pray for those known to us in our homes and community who are in need of special care, those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who find life unfulfilling. Help us to bring a word of encouragement and invite them to belong to this body of believers. We pray for your wider world, for the places where there is war. We think of those who suffer daily, who live in fear and in sorrow. We ask that peace may come in Ukraine and the Middle East, in the many places that we do not hear so much about, but where there is human suffering. Help us from the bounty of this land to address the needs that we can. Hear the prayer that has been spoken, the prayers in each of each life, and the prayer you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power.
By supporting educational initiatives, individuals are empowered by to explore their spirituality, deepen their knowledge, and build a better future for themselves and their community. Imagine a classroom of kindergartens in a refugee camp where children eagerly gather to learn about the world and their place in it. Picture a young adult discovering the profound teaching of their faith for the first time, safely supported by their peers. Consider a group of parents and guardians gathering in a workshop, sharing their hope and dreams for their communities, guided by their mentors, who inspire them to lead with compassion and justice. <clears throat> Imagine people learning and restoring lost languages to preserve precious history and culture. These moments of growth are at our hearts, and they are made possible by compassion and generosity. As we look to the future, the impact of educational innovatives through mission and service partners become even clearer. Every lesson learned, every skill acquired, and every relationship builds contributions to a large tapestry of hope and resign. Whether it is a child in a rural classroom or an adult in a leadership program, the educational provides them through mission and service partners is a beacon of guiding individuals towards a path of faith, understanding, and service. Together, we are sowing the seeds of more compassionate world. Thank you. We are thankful for mission and service giving, for your regular support, for memorials, and other ways that you remember the needs of your church. Please join with me in our doxology and pray. <laughs>